Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're having a great day. It is a miserable day here in the UK, but this is our normal weather conditions, so I thought it'd be perfect to go out and try autopilot with auto wipers beta on to see how well they work together and whether the rain in kind of a, a dark, gray, like horrible cloudy day, how much does the rain really affect the autopilot system? So for this, I've got the left side camera, which hopefully you all can see. I've got this front camera here showing the uh, dashboard. So you've got a nice clear image of that. And of course we've got this camera here. Hopefully you can see everything from it. So we've got a lorry turning right to start off with and the car lets it completely go and then it will start speeding back up again. So yeah, this is horrible weather and I, I wanted to really show autopilot in the most conditions we're gonna get here locally. And as you can see from the weather forecast, yeah, it's pretty much all rain for a long, long time. So that's pretty depressing, but that's the UK. And you can see we get so much buildup of water here on the left-hand side that I'm assuming that is gonna make the autopilot system struggle a little bit. So I'm on auto wipers. This is auto wipers one. I'm actually gonna click it to auto wipers two because I think it needs to go a little bit faster, or at least it needs to wipe a little bit faster. And I'm not sure how the lines in the middle of the road are gonna cope, whether they're gonna start disappearing or anything like that, but obviously that's something that we want to test here and see if it works. I've just noticed, I apologize on the dash that the GoPro is flashing red in the dash. You might get a little bit of flashback on that. Normally I have all the LED blinkers turned off. So I've done this route several times up until here. All oh, the auto wipers have decided to go a lot faster. So I've done this route a lot of times, but we're not gonna turn left to go to Swindon at a roundabout. We're gonna continue to go to Marlborough straight on because that road is nice. It's got lots of curves and hills and things that hopefully the autopilot system will be able to cope with nicely. But obviously we're out here to test it to its limits. So yeah, you can see I've got auto wipers on, so I can turn that off now and we'll just have the nav on here. How do you lot have it? Do you have it facing north or do you have it facing the way you're going? I like to have it the way I'm going. I can't have it north orientated. That's really odd in my opinion. So we've got no cars behind us for quite a while, which is nice because coming up in a second is a little situation where in the daytime previously, we have veered right and then we go back left because it goes into a double lane on the left. Whereas when I actually filmed this at night time, it stuck to the left and it did it a lot better. So let's see how that works. It's at this point here where the uh, national speed limit of 60 comes into play. But the wipers are changing speed quite a lot. It's now gone a lot slower. So here it used to follow the lane on the right. What's it gonna do here? We've got a van and, oh, interesting. Okay, so it did correct itself but not until the last minute. And we'll go up to 55. So that was quite interesting. It did correct itself, which I wasn't expecting it to do, if I'm being honest. I thought it would just kind of go on the right-hand side there, but it did pull itself back in. I hope you can hear me over all of this. Whoa, okay, we veered really close then to the left. It swayed out a lot more than I would have liked it to. Let's bring it, actually let's stick at 55. 55 is a good, safe speed for this bit. But I'm definitely feeling it going closer to the left. Now I know this does camber slightly to the left this road and there's lots of potholes. But, no that's not too bad. And what will it do here? It tucked into the right at the last second and then carried on forward, which is fine unless there was someone trying to overtake us last second, but that, that was fine. And now we've got a nice big open stretch. I'm gonna to go to the speed limit of 60 miles an hour. We're sitting in the middle of the road quite nicely here. The left uh, line does disappear in a second. but it's seeming to be okay. We're starting to get a little bit of spray over from the other side of the road as well, but it's dealing with that fine. My lights are also on, but everything's on auto. Basically the whole car is on auto right now. Wipers are speeding up. 
Now, the way that this works is it actually uses uh, a neural net to calculate how much water is on the screen at one time. So it doesn't have like a normal moisture sensor that a lot of cars have. And I think that's potentially a big downfall of the auto wipers. It's almost as if they forgot to put that in. And I mean, they're still beta testing auto wipers. Loads of cars have auto wipers now. And lots of them are better than this system. But again, I think that's because they actually use a real moisture sensor on the, on the dash, whereas this is using a, a neural net. But hopefully with time, it will improve and potentially get better than the sensor. Just because then it could potentially deal with, you know, snow, uh, like freezing rain coming down. We're getting quite close to the left here. Now it's pulling us back out. It's definitely learned this bit a little bit better because we have had to abort a lot of times on the left there. So it's definitely learned that bit a little bit better. Just gonna bring it down to 50 because sometimes this is a, um, uh, what do you call it? Where they teach horses, equestrian. Equestri I can't even think about it. It's very early in the morning. It's not, it's 10 o'clock. Okay, so instead of going left here, we're gonna go straight over and head our way to Marlborough. I haven't actually done autopilot on this road for quite a while, but if I remember correctly, the road is quite good in terms of there's lots of good lines, there's lots of bad lines and there's lots of corners and wider roads so it should be a little bit more interesting and we're following this Citroen in a kind of questionable duck egg blue color but still not bad so we're going to stick behind it going 50 we're currently set at where are we set at we're set at three car times three car lengths behind but it's not done by car length it is done by timing based on your speed so we're set at three. And I believe this coming up on the left is Silbury Hill, which was a man-made thing, and they actually have exca excavated and gone inside that hill, which is quite cool. So yeah, because this is a tourist area, the lines are actually pretty good. And it's following them quite nicely. And as you can see from the car in front, which is just a normal driver, 50 is a fine speed to go around here, if not questionably slower. So we will pick it up on a straight to see if we can, you know, kind of stay as close to what a normal driver would be doing. But this is a nice distance to be in the wet. In fact, because it is so wet, I'm gonna set this like to its furthest. Let's set that to seven. So we are now seven car distances or whatever it calculates at behind. Now we're going under trees here, which is making some really big, whoa, okay, that was oh, a little bit skew whiff around that bit of corner. Again, I think it's because the corner went, as we went round the corner, the hill uh, descended a little bit. So that does make the system sometimes seem a little bit confused. It's doing this bit quite nicely. We've got some surface water here that we've hit into. Didn't make any difference though. And now we're gonna go up a hill, down a hill onto a lovely big wide straight. I did this route so many times. So when I went to school, I was only at school like five years ago. So it wasn't that long ago. Whoa, okay. We slammed on there for that car or the lorry, sorry. The rain is getting really, really heavy. And now this is where the, yeah, see, apply light force because the lines have disappeared and it's struggling to kind of see the lines a little bit. And now the line should pick back up. So let's go up to 55. You can see the Citroen's pulling away and um, we're, we're being left in the dust here. Now, because this is, there's so much surface water, it is actually quite a struggle to see the lines and they come back here. Oh, okay. See, I'm ho I'm holding the wheel the whole time. Okay, we've gone right, then left. So I think it was trying to follow the, the lane on the right there because it was a nicer line. But it's done it okay in the end. Getting really close to this left side. Oh, a lot of water. 
helicopters are coming at us. But it's it's done it fine. It hasn't done it a fully confidently, if I'm being totally honest. But it did okay. So yeah, when we go under trees, I'm just gonna bring it down to 50 because we do go into a 50. On bikes in this weather? Whoo, you're crazy. Um, yeah, when we, oh, we're getting very close to this left. We're going through some water. It almost like apex that, which was kind of cool, but I don't think it should have. Yeah, and now we're going into this 50 here. So yeah, sorry. So when we go under trees, obviously we get big droplets of water. And I'm wondering if we get a couple of those land on the cameras, does that make it harder for it to see? Or, you know, can it see through water? I don't think it can quite as well because we are getting, you know, a few left and rights. We're kind of ping-ponging. And then it's lost the line here. Is it going to pick it back up? Wow. Wow. Okay. It's, it, stayed, it did stay fine in the lane, but it went a little bit left, a little bit right. And again, I'm not sure if that's bad lane marking or because of this stuff here. It didn't have any problem with that Royal Mail van coming out. I can't even see the middle line right now. So I'm not sure what it can see. Okay, I can see it again now. And now we go back into a 60, but I'm gonna keep it at 50 because I don't feel 100% confident going 60 down here and letting the car judge the speed as well. Oh, a little bit of a swing out. Again, there's no left line for any of this. Come on, wipers, a little bit faster. All right, the wipers don't want to pick up. There we go, now it's picking up. I'm just trying to give you exactly what I would do, so I would have done that a bit faster. What does it think of this yellow Lupo? It's very close. No, nope, no problem, just drove straight past it. I think that was a nice Morgan there on the right-hand side of the road, if you saw that, very old. British styling and this is quite a tighter corner so are we going to be all right yeah no problem at all man it's really starting to come down now but I've got to say I've been very very impressed with it it's worked really well the wipers make me laugh <laughs> just because they're, they're so crazy and we're coming into Marlborough here but because the first thing you kind of see once you get past like this bit oh we're going very close to the left I'm gonna let it do it yeah it did it fine we come into this 40 now and I'm gonna stop autopilot just before we get to the 30 oh here we go okay so we've got some lights be interesting to see what the car does here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and let the car do whatever it needs to do to get around these lights. Is it is it gonna do it? I don't think so. I kind of hope no one comes behind so that we have no. Okay, we are getting someone behind, but that's fine. I assume at this point. Oh, we're getting on the on the dash. It says hold at the top, and then it says to resume cruise, press accelerator pedal. So does that mean it's not gonna drive unless I accelerate? I think that's what it's gonna mean. Oh my God, these are the longest lights ever, but they're finally going. Anyway, so let's just see if it actually goes by itself. No, so I have to press, I've pressed the accelerator, accelerator pedal, pedal there, and now it's doing it itself. But we have obviously got cones here. Is it gonna, no, see it was trying to follow obviously that line there and stay in that left lane. So we've had to take it into our own hands and carry on forward. So autopilot's not available, I guess, because we're on the other side of the road. And there we go, we can go back into autopilot now. So I don't know how it's gonna judge those kind of things, whether we're gonna need almost roadworks to tell full, full self-drive cars in the future that this is what they're doing, so this is how you evade it, or whether it obviously is gonna actively evade it. I hope that it actively does it, because that would be great, 
Whereas if you need like a QR code, for example, uh, uh, every bit that the car has to read, I don't really think that's um, gonna be the best, best way to go around it. And as we come down now into this 30, I think we're gonna hit quite a lot of traffic here. So this is Marlborough School, and we've got another red light right here. So I'm gonna end this video right now. That was quite fun though. I, I'm actually surprised with how well the car did uh, in such wet conditions. The auto wipers can be very hard to judge. Sometimes they work great and sometimes they seem to be doing their own thing. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section and any other kind of tests or trials you want me to do and any other kind of weather conditions. I really do want to do like a global tour of Tesla Autopilot to see how it kind of varies in different places and where it works best. So if anybody out there wants to help along with that, let me know, get in touch, okay? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, drive safe.